guys, it's Anissa. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I did one of my favorite videos to film for you guys. I did another full face of first impressions. I feel like it's been a while since I have actually been able to sit down and just test a whole bunch of new makeup with you guys, and I'm super excited for today's video. This is the look that I was able to come up with. Overall, I'm very, very happy with a lot of the products that I used in today's video. I have a mix of drugstore, high end, we have some rare beauty, Derma Blend, Woma Beauty, Milani, L'Oreal, Lawless, some makeup by Mario. We have a little bit of everything. If you guys are interested to see how I came up with this look, then make sure to keep on watching. But before I go any further, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. I post on this channel every four days, so you never have to miss me for too long. But yeah, let's just go ahead and get into it. Guys, we are just gonna go ahead and jump right into the eyes. So I do have a new brow pencil today, Milani Precision Brow Pencil, and I have the color 160 Ebony. It is dual-ended, so you have spoolie on one end, product on the other. I always use a pencil to outline, and then I go in with a pomade to fill in. Very creamy and pigmented first impression. That color is like a perfect match. The amount of pigmentation was perfect, so I wanna see how blendable it is. Stop. I would be lying to you guys if I said I was not impressed. First impression is actually a lot better than most high-end brow pencils I've tried. Gliding onto the skin like butter and it is blending out beautifully. One thing I found with most drugstore products is that they'll be pigmented, but once you blend, you lose some of your pigmentation. And I'm not having that problem with this. When I blend it out, I'm able to keep the pigment but it just looks a little bit less harsh. 10 out of 10, that was so easy to use. I love products like these because they make it super quick to do your brows because you don't have to try extra hard to make the product work. You don't have to take extra time to blend because it's so pigmented. You don't have to take extra time doing extra strokes because it's not pigmented enough. I went ahead and just quickly filled in the tail part of my brow using this Morphe brow cream and I have this in the color chocolate mousse. Don't really mess with the front much because I like it to kind of have that ombre effect, makes it look a little bit more natural. I'm so excited because I I have a new product that I want to try to carve my brows out with. This is technically not a pot concealer, but it is like a pot foundation. This is the Derma Blend Cover Cream. I have this in the color Hazelnut Beige 45W. The reason I'm so excited to try this is because it is so huge. For some reason, this was giving me NYX Full Coverage Concealer vibes, which I think it was because it has a black top and a clear bottle. It's supposed to be a foundation, but I wanted to go ahead and try it as a pot concealer because if I can use this to carve out my brows, I will never have to use another product. Dipping into the product, it's creamy, but it's not creamy creamy enough to where I would use that all over the face. I found with a lot of stick foundations, they're just too thick and heavy feeling on the face. They have good coverage, but they just are so cakey feeling. That color is perfect for what I like underneath the brows. And the coverage is definitely full. It almost like melts into the skin once it comes into contact with the skin. If the heat that my skin is giving off is helping the product just melt into the face, it's a lot thicker feeling on the brush than it is on the face, if that makes sense. <gasps> oh my gosh, that was just straight oil that squirted into my eye. I really hope I got that on tape. Now we know to shake before use. Went ahead and applied some eyeshadow primer because I do not have a new one. I'm excited to try today's eyeshadows because they're neutral and I just am manifesting that I'm going to love this. We have two new eyeshadow products I'm gonna be using today. First, this is the Makeup by Mario Master Matte Eyeshadow Palette and this is what it looks like. This comes in a matte version and then there's like an all glittery version. I'm very late to this. Sometimes I really have to like sit and debate and let it cook in my soul if me and a product are meant to try one another. The perfect size, so it's great for travel. You get so many awesome transition shades that are not only good for dark skin, but also light skin, so very inclusive. What I plan on doing with this, if I like it, like I'm going to do today, is using my all mattes for my transition shades and my crease shades, and then using like a single eyeshadow. For single eyeshadow today, I'm gonna to be using this Hourglass Scatter Light Glitter Eyeshadow, and this is in the color Burnish. Absolutely 100% an impulse buy, but when you see the color, you will understand why. I know that I wanna use this on my lid, but I I want to go ahead and use these colors first. Take these two shades right here and mix them and put them into my crease. I am getting a little bit of kickback in the pan. 
And I always start with my crease shade first because when I highlight under my brows and then do my eye primer, basically a clean canvas. So I like to do the crease to put some dimension back into the eye. That way I can kind of picture where I want everything else. I know that some people do their lid first, some people do their outer crease first. Shadows are pigmented and they are not chalky blending out. I am getting a little bit of kickback in the pan. I'm gonna take a smaller blending brush and just to be a little bit more precise in my crease, I'm gonna take these two darker colors right here and go right over top first two shades, but just not as diffused. I want this to be a little bit more concentrated. Oh wow, okay, that is pigmented. I'm really so intrigued by this palette too because I have never seen a palette like this. This is not the first all matte eyeshadow palette, but this is one of the first travel friendly, inclusive eyeshadow palettes that I've ever seen. Not only do I have a lot of little fine lines on my eyes, and not only are my eyes just hooded, but I have a lot of texture on my eyes. I wanted to go ahead and use this black, but I'm gonna do liner and I don't want my outer crease to be too dark to where you don't see the liner. So I'm gonna take this color right here and just place that on the very outer crease. On the outside, do you guys see how pigmented that is? Why did I not try this sooner? Just to make sure we don't have any harsh lines or anything, I'm going to go on the top right here and just blend everything and then also go towards the outer crease and make sure that none of that is looking harsh. 10 out of 10. I think that I didn't wanna try this palette for a really long time because I was like, oh, it's so basic. I don't need that. I have colors like this in my collection. This is the most skin tone, complexion inspired matte eyeshadow palette I've ever tried. This is more complexion based to me than the Too Faced Born This Way complexion based eyeshadow palette. We're gonna add a little bit of shimmer because if you know me, you know that it's not a completed eyeshadow look until I have some shimmer. This is what the color looks like. Is that not gorgeous? Even if you think it's not gorgeous, don't tell me because I already have my mind made up. I'm gonna go ahead and try it without any setting spray first and I'm just going to put this really right here. Almost like a cut crease, which most of the time, all of my eyeshadow looks look like they're cut creases because my eyes are hooded. Oh, that is pretty. And I'm using a smaller brush, that way I can take my time and place the product outward at my own pace. Keep in mind, this is no setting spray. To diffuse the matte and the shimmers together, what I do is I start on the matte on the shimmer side, okay? And then I just kind of swipe the product over, that way, especially with glitter, it just kind of naturally gradiates over there. That was pretty, but now I wanna try it with some setting spray. It's actually not much different. It's just more creamy. It's actually easier to apply this way. Sometimes the wetness of adding the setting spray kind of accentuates the specks and the glitter and makes it look a little bit more wet looking on the eye. But honestly, both eyes look about the same to me. The formula just looks a little bit creamier over here. So pigment wise, there's really no difference. Both of these, 10 out of 10 out of 10. I will say that Hourglass is nice. You can achieve the same thing with an e.l.f. liquid glitter eyeshadow. Is it anything extraordinary for it to be Hourglass? No but I'm still gonna use it because I paid for it and it was nice. Popped on some e.l.f. eye tapes because we do have a new eyeliner today. I haven't tried a new eyeliner in a quick minute, so I figured that it was time. This is the Too Faced Better Than Sex Easy Glide Waterproof Liquid Liner. It does come in a pen. I will only use a pen eyeliner. The wand formula is just too messy with my eyelash extension. It says shake me, baby, so we're gonna shake up. I should mention that I always start with the wing and then do the line inside. I know some people do the line first and then the wing, but this is how I do it. It's the easiest for me. Very, very black. That is the best wing I've done in a very long time. Let's see if we can get lucky twice. I wanna to mention to you guys too, when I'm going over this part right here multiple times, it's not because the product is not pigmented, it's because my eyes are hooded, so they have a lot of wrinkles and stuff, so I gotta make sure that I get all the skin. I'm feeling a little better. They were a little too thin. It wasn't the product's fault. It's just, this is so, actually so tiny that it's easy to keep the line thin and then build it up thicker if you want to. More of a brush tip, it's not a felt. But that was very easy to use. It's very black. Also 10 out of 10 for this. I think with eyeliner, it's easier to add than it is to take away. So I always start with something smaller than what I think I'll actually like and then build onto it. Make sure if you're using these off eye tapes that you let your eyeliner dry for a couple seconds before you peel it off because if not, it's just gonna bleed and then you're not gonna have that crisp line like you want. Oh my gosh, 
Okay, those look pretty even. All right guys, now it is time for my favorite part, which is complexion. I do not have a new primer water, so I went ahead and used this Rare Beauty Always an Optimist 4-in-1 mist. We are ready for primer. So I always use two primers, hydrating primer and a more pore filling slash mattifying primer. I like to put my hydrating primer on first. That way my pore filling primer has a nice smooth canvas to go onto. Milani Aqua Bloom Hydrating and Replenishing Water Cream. It comes in this gorgeous blue packaging and then it has a pump that's upside down. Anything that says water or gel and hydrating, I will try. I really do not like lotion based products but I will try something that is water-based or gel-based. It looks like a lotion, but when I pumped it out onto my finger, it was more cool feeling, and that's what it feels like on my face now. The texture of this is very similar to the Morphe Total Softy Gel Moisturizer. Oh my gosh, that feels invigorating. This actually is very hydrating feeling and it's giving me a glow but it's not an oily glow it's not sticky feeling also 10 out of 10 first impressions i have been loving everything that i have been trying from milani recently two of my favorite drugstore primers that i mentioned in my best of beauty are from milani smashbox photo finish oil and shine control primer i have been loving the original smashbox photo finish primer i have not been able to find anything in the drugstore that is as good as that so this isn't necessarily going to blur my pores but it is going to mattify so i go ahead and just put this in my t-zone where my oil tends to break through fastest and this is also very cooling feeling i don't know if it has silicone in it it doesn't feel like it but it may i know some people don't really like silicone based primers i prefer silicone based primers over lotion ones especially when they're supposed to be targeting your pores and stuff i just feel like silicone based primer truly goes in and fills in that pore while a lotion kind of absorbs and sinks into it the silicone based primer isn't going to have the ability to absorb into your skin i mean it technically is pore clogging but it's not like you're keeping it on for forever. So that's why I always make sure that I double cleanse when I wear makeup. I'm impressed. So it doesn't feel like it has silicone in it, but it definitely did do a little bit of smoothing and it definitely took away all of the shine from my forehead. 10 out of 10. Smashbox primers are definitely expensive. I mean, they're on the higher end side of higher end, but everything that I have tried from them, I would pay for again. I wasn't gonna buy it and TikTok made me buy it. I need to do a video like full face using makeup TikTok made me buy it. L'Oreal True Match Nude Hyaluronic Tinted Serum and I have the color 7 to 8 Tan Deep. You see where it's separated? Where it's lighter, it's like really finely milled shimmer. If you've ever seen the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood filter, that's what this looks like. I wasn't gonna try this, but then I saw that it's supposed to have medium coverage and I was like, okay, we can make it work. We can make it work. It claims to have the skin benefits of a hyaluronic serum, but it's just tinted. And it says instant radiance with a nude skin effect. Instantly skin feels hydrated. Skin looks healthier over time. So this is like a two-in-one product because you're getting a little bit of makeup, but you also get some skincare benefits. On this channel, whenever we test new foundations, we always do half brush, half sponge. I'm gonna go ahead and do my sponge side first. This is the biggest sponge in the e.l.f. complexion tree, one of my favorites. It's not as thin as I thought it would be. It's still thin, but not like watery thin. And I feel like this match is actually good. Just gonna start with about this much. Okay, that's weird. That is really, really weird. I got rid of all of my marks, but I still look like I have such glowy skin. Not oily. I have found though with natural finish foundations, your texture is gonna look a little bit accentuated because when your light hits the face, you can see all that texture, but it's okay because once you use powder, it takes care of that. Okay, that's impressive. I know I say this a lot. I say this a lot about a lot of foundations, but it's true. But what I'm also about to say is true. This is your skin, but better. Nowhere in here are you even gonna get a little bit of mattifying. The separation that you guys were seeing is also contributing to the fact that it's glowy. There's not glitter on my face, but it does look super healthy and supple. Not super heavy feeling either. Now that I did blend out a little bit more though, you can see a little bit of the discoloration peeking through, which is okay because I have a powder foundation today that I'm going to use. The only time I will ever build up a foundation to full coverage is if I'm using a translucent powder over top, which is practically never. So that's why I'm not building it up. Do you see how much coverage that gives initially? That is crazy. And I think I'm so surprised too, because when I think of things that are 
supposed to double as skincare and makeup. Usually always like a tinted moisturizer with light coverage versus this definitely achieved medium coverage. I feel like my texture looks worse, but it's not because of this product. I know it's just the fact that I'm sitting under these lights. For example, when you put on highlighter, your cheekbone is a high point of your face, okay? So when you hit the light, you're able to see that highlighter. That's kind of the same thing that happens with acne. It's a high point on your face, it's a raised point, so when it hits the light, you can see it. But it doesn't look bad. This is medium coverage, but I would say on the lighter side of medium. I will say though, I feel like the sponge side is a little bit more heavy feeling than the brush side, which very rarely happens. Usually it is the opposite. It looks like I don't have makeup on right now. It looks like my skin is a little bit more even because the redness has gone away from the coverage, but I think that this is really pretty. I did not have a new cream contour, so I went ahead and used this Makeup Revolution concealer just for a little bit of quick cream contour. I just feel like I can't stop doing this because my face looks so healthy. Time to cover up these under eye bags. I do have a new concealer that I wanna try, Dermablend Cover care concealer and I have this in the color 50W. This is actually pretty much like my skin tone. I didn't like the shade that was above this. So what I've been liking to do anyways though is use a concealer that is more like my skin tone to actually conceal and then go in with something on top of it that's a little bit brighter. Doing that instead of just going in directly with a very light concealer gets rid of that grayish look that can kind of come through sometimes with the veins underneath your eyes. The OFA applicator is huge on this. Not too thick, not too thin. The component on this is pretty much identical to the Tarte Shape Tape. Sometimes, depending on my mood, I will either use a sponge or a brush. I usually get a little bit more coverage with a brush, so I wanna go ahead and compare them side by side to see if there's a difference. As long as my under eyes look bright and concealed, I really don't care what the rest of my face looks like, okay? And that's why I can deal with a medium coverage foundation. Beside from the fact that I use a powder foundation, which I apparently a lot of people don't do. I thought that was a normal thing. I've always done my makeup that way. That is not anything new. Let me, let me know. Do you guys use a powder foundation and a liquid foundation or do you just use one or the other? I could not imagine just using liquid foundation. I could probably get away with just a powder foundation and some concealer because I do that sometimes, but not just liquid foundation. Definitely concealed. She's cute. This is actually my favorite brush to blend out my under eye concealer. Chic Pro Angle Blender and it is from Five Below. Flat top kabuki brush, but it's slanted, so it's perfect and it's small. My under eyes literally automatically crease always. You see these little fine lines I have? Trick, when you're setting underneath your eyes, look up and it gets rid of the creases. I'm just gonna use a little bit of this e.l.f. camo concealer on top of it in the color Deep Olive just to brighten things up a little bit. I feel like that's something that I never verbally said because it's just something I always did because I don't like to get makeup in my eyes, so I always look up. But then I realized that when I was setting underneath my eyes, I was setting my creases if I wasn't looking up versus if I do look up, it allows the skin to stretch out all the way. Essential step, the e.l.f. Flawless Concealer Brush and just look up and go underneath my eyes to make sure that the concealer is blended in Lawless Loose Setting Powder in the color Classic Translucent. I really have not tried a whole bunch from Lawless. I think I tried one blush of theirs and it was all right. Every time I would go into Sephora, I would know every single brand that was in there. So when I started going in there and not knowing all the brands, I was like, okay, you're slacking a little bit, Anissa. Let's keep up. Always set underneath my eyes when I'm using loose setting powder with a sponge. I just wanna pause because this moment right here is always the one that scares me when I'm trying new translucent powders because I'm like, okay, is it actually gonna be translucent? Ooh, okay, I wouldn't say that that is actually completely translucent because it did lighten underneath my eyes a little bit, which I don't mind because I like to have a little bit of extra brightness. I'm telling you, when you just put that white powder on your face and you're as dark as I am, you start to question a couple things. Ooh, that looks so pretty from far away. But the combo that's happening right now is really reminding me of something that can only be achieved with Laura Mercier loose setting powder. Clearly, I've never found anything that can get rid of my creases. And quite frankly, I don't want anything to get rid of my creases because I feel like if you can conceal creases, you're a little bit too thick for underneath the eyes. I was kind of skeptical if this was actually going to be translucent because it does have a little bit of a yellow tinge to it, if you guys can see that. I feel like I just put a filter on this part of my face right here. I'm really excited to try this liquid 
blush. Rare Beauty Liquid Blush in the color Love. I don't know if I should put this straight on my cheeks or if I should put it on the back of my hand and then blend it in. Because I've heard this is very pigmented. I think that the wise thing to do would be to just put a little bit on the back of my hand because I know that with bronzer especially, it's a lot harder to take away than it is to add. What I do is almost like blend the product out on the back of my hand. That way you get a nice even distribution on your brush. No, no, we're not showing up today. I was trying to be conservative, but I'm just gonna put it on my face. We're just gonna do it. We're just gonna go for it. So that dries down really, really fast. It didn't pull my makeup off, but it's a little bit patchy. So there's a lot right here, but then there's like none down here. Whenever the colors look different on different parts of my face, the first thing I think is that it pulled my makeup off, but it didn't, but it's not going on evenly. We're gonna try it with a sponge. See, I'm gonna give this product the benefit of the doubt because that right there did pull my makeup off a little bit, but it could be because there's powder underneath it. I probably should have waited to set underneath my eyes because sometimes some cream blushes do not like going on top of powder and that's fine. That's fine, it's just good to know that stuff. I feel like I need to give this another chance. We're gonna neutralize the score. Now it's time for powder foundation. Huda Beauty Luminous Pressed Powder in the color 8 Tan. I'm super excited to try this. I wanna go ahead and show you guys what this looks like up close. I feel like I would really love this with powders that are more mattifying because I found that sometimes not all matte foundation foundations love powder foundation because it can just be a little bit too much sometimes. I'm not getting a lot of kickback in the pan either. I actually am going to take my makeup off right there. It's really not super pigmented. I'm not getting a whole bunch of coverage. Guys, who jinxed me? Who put their little voodoo spell on me? Oh no. No, no, no. This to me looks oily. It does not look nice and healthy and glowy. It looks like I just put highlighter on my forehead. What, what is this? This is a no for me. I'm a little hesitant to use this now. Huda Beauty Glowish Cheeky Vegan Blush Powder in the color three. I don't mind when blushes have a little bit of a glow to them. That's actually pretty. I'm gonna go ahead and blend it out, but it is pretty pigmented. Not getting a whole lot of kickback. Oh my gosh. <sighs> okay, that actually kind of fixed my cheeks. I'm just going over top of this with my sponge to make me look a little less crazy. Like I need any more glow on my face. I'm gonna go ahead and use highlighter. A Rare Beauty Liquid Illuminator in the color Flaunt. I'm just gonna put a little bit on the tip of my nose. Ooh, okay, that was more than a little bit. I lied. Oh, okay, that's actually pretty. Oh, yes, that's amazing. And this is what I'm talking about. I love this because it's not super glitter heavy to where it looks like you have chunks of glitter on your face. It's just the smoothest, finely milled highlighter to where when you turn in the light, it just looks like magical. This is beautiful. I like this. This looks very intimidating in the bottle, but I promise it is not that intimidating when you put it on the face. It's very easy to blend out, especially with a sponge. We are almost done. I went ahead and set my face with this Wet n Wild Photo Finish Matte Finish Setting Spray. This is not a new product. Okay, so I went out to eat, took a little break, almost done with the makeup, but I wanted to mention to you guys, this powder, I feel like it had little to no coverage and when I was watching demos on TikTok and Instagram Reels, it had a good amount of coverage. Not loving what's going on on my forehead, but I also don't hate it. I usually am not used to my forehead looking this shiny, but it looks semi-pretty, it really does. The only thing I don't like is the fact that it is kind of accentuating my texture on my forehead. Like, it kind of looks like I have snake skin. I'll zoom in for you guys. It looks like I have snake skin on my forehead. I'm very confused because my forehead looks like this, but then my cheeks look matte, but the foundation that I used was not mattifying, so this had to have set something. I wanna use this again on its own with a powder puff to see if I just, if this is one of those powders that I'm gonna to have to use with a powder puff to get the most coverage out of it. Pretty much every foundation review that I do, my cheeks always stay the same because my cheeks are not oily. My cheeks are very normal and it looks fine on my cheeks. I'm thinking that maybe if this has good coverage, I can use it on my cheeks because my cheeks do not really need a mattifying powder per se. And then something like the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop on my forehead. Now it is time for lips. We do have all new lip products. This is the Milani Understatement Lip Liner in the color 180 Rich Cocoa. I love roll-up lip liners. Most of the time I find them to be a little bit more creamy than a pencil. Not always, but most of the time. So I'm gonna go ahead and line my lips with this. 
that's a pretty color and it's very creamy. Love that. Lip crayon from Milani. This is the matte lip crayon, 140 So Obsessed. I love when matte lip products are creamy. This lip combo made my look 20 times better. Oh my gosh, this is so comfortable on the lip. One last lip product, Woman Beauty by Sharon C Line. Floss Gloss High Shine Lip Gloss, and I have this in the color Edible. It's not sticky. All right, guys, this is the finished look in today's video. Very mixed feelings. Like, I do not hate it, and I would actually go out like this. I wish I would have finished the lips before I went out to eat because I am loving this makeup 20 times more. Honestly, I really, really loved everything. The only two things that I feel like I could genuinely live without at the moment are the Rare Beauty Liquid Blush and the Huda Beauty Powder. Not gonna go on and on because I've kind of already talked about the fact that I just need to use these products more with different techniques. So that's the thing that sucks sometimes about doing full face of first impressions is that when you're using a lot of products that you're not familiar with, you don't know what to expect. Let me know if you have tried any of these products or are wanting to try any of these products if they're on any of your wish list what is on your wish list if you guys would like to see me try any specific makeup please leave it down in the comments below thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye